Hello everyone and welcome to another wrap up video. This time it's all about my top 10 C dramas of 2022. This year has been very lukewarm when it comes to dramas. There are a few that really impressed me, but for the most part, it was really bad, like bad plot issues with the writing, bad acting, like so many different things that really affected the year. And also, I think my overall taste in what I look for in a series has changed as well. And I have like low <laughs> tolerance for some tropes. And as soon as I see them, I'm like, no, okay, this is not the drama for me. But there were those that really impressed me and those are the ones I want to focus on today. I will talk about all the other, all the others in another video. So starting with my number 10, Gentlemen of East 8. Now, this was a pleasant surprise. I knew nothing about the drama. I didn't know anything like the plot, the actors, nothing at all. I was just browsing one day looking for something to watch and I stumbled upon the drama and I was like, oh, let me give that a try. And best decision I ever made because it was such a great time. So this is the story of four close friends. You have Tong Yu, Guang Chong, Lee Jason and Sha Fei. Now, they have been friends since university and they decided to stay, you know, in the city close together. And, you know, they even make a pact that they will always stay together and be friends. First of all, anytime you hear that in a series, you know, trouble is coming. And their friendship is really put to the test throughout the series. So they, the series focus on the friendship, the careers, and the relationship. First thing that I really enjoy about it is that this is a grown story about grown people. You know, they go to very, very various issues that many adults face and I love the fact that you know some of the childishness that we sometimes get when it comes to relationship and some of the dramas were not included in that it was a real reflection of their age range in theories their relationships be it friendship of with or with their love interest were really a reflection of what a typical relationship would be between adults. And they all have various issues. So Tongyu is an AI engineer, and it's best to start with him because it felt like even though it was a story about the four of them, most of the time it revolved about around him and is actually the catalyst for the entire series. Um, his personality, sometimes I liked him, sometimes he will just get on my nerve because on in, on one breath, it will be like this very easygoing, you know, not taking some, some things too seriously and someone that you qualify as very approachable and then on the next breath he will just do something that makes no sense at all and be this arrogant entitled um human being and it was just frustrating at time but his is definitely my favorite relationship in the group because some of the love interest I had a lot of issues with, but because the story is so well written, even those issues became like um attractive points for the series because it's the lack of perfection that really makes this really um relatable and it feels like those are real stories from people that, you know, exist in the world. 
Then you have Guo Chong, which is a university lecturer. Now, this is the most frustrating character in the friendship group. Why? Because I feel like sometimes he was his own worst enemy. It will be in his way, in his own way. He didn't know what he wanted. And sometimes we'll just be an obstacle just for the sake of being an obstacle. It just annoyed the life out of me. Like, I hate those type of people where, you know, there's not really something wrong with them. They, you know, they struggle. Like, everyone has their share of struggles. But even if something is going well, he will still put himself down and sometimes his, his lack of self-respect and self-confidence will just annoy me. You know, at first it was like really endearing and you will root for him. You want him to do better, but he made some decisions that would just, that were just like, okay, no, stop. Enough now. Get yourself together. Then you have Shaofei, which who is a branded shop manager and he had the most trouble in the series. Oh my God, his wife is a handful. First of all, the way they got into the relationship was already dodgy and you knew this spelled nothing but trouble. But at the same time, it was really entertaining because most of the time in the series, men are the ones that are you know, the playboy, and they're always making their spouse suffer until they decide to change halfway through the series. And then we expect the lead actress to forgive them. And then, you know, everything will come better. But that was not the case at all with him. He was the one suffering. So um, when the series starts, you assume the type of person that he is, you know, someone that is very promiscuous, he is maybe a playboy and something like this. But the more you get to know him, you realize that this is just a persona that he created so that he will make himself like client for the shop and everything. And you just realize that he is not the type of person that you first assumed him to be. Then he meet his wife and oh my God, <laughs> it just went downhill for him going from now. First of all, she didn't even respect the relationship and I wish she would have suffered just a little bit more before them coming back together because at some point I felt like she did not even value him, you know. Yes, he had his own issues, but he tried to change himself for the relationship which i felt i felt like it was an issue anyway because there's just so long that you can go with um with playing someone that you are not until it becomes suffocating and you just want to get out and i felt like at times he was the only one making efforts in the relationship and every time she would come and expect so many different things for him she would just annoy me because i'm like oh my god can't you see everything that he's doing right now and uh his relationship was definitely the most entertaining one even though it was very frustrating but you know you were just rooting for them like when is this marriage going to work out like go your separate way if you just going to make each other suffer like this then the last friend in the group is Jason who is a chef this is the character that you love to hate is your typical immature um character that doesn't want to grow up doesn't know what he wants in life has so many different opportunities but doesn't even try to find out how to make that work is always has he always has his head in the clouds and then as the story progresses you just root for him he is going to go through so many changes and he has so many different little issues that are going to prompt him to take his life make take his life into 
his own hands and try to be a better man and try to be more ambitious with his career and try to make something of himself in all the different aspects of his life. And the friendship is explored so nicely in the series because when the series starts, you know, you assume everything is going well. You know, it's a group of friends. They've been friends forever and they en understand each other. And then you realize so many different little things that later on becomes uh, big issues. For example, within the friend group, there is one person or let's say two people that are a bit more successful than the others. What this creates is that there are some in the group, like Jason, for example, who always feels like he's lacking compared to his friend. And every time he will be around them, even without saying it, you could tell that he's comparing where he is in life with the others and maybe not, the comparison is maybe not to his favor and it, affects him to the point where you know you start doing little things like hiding little issues that he is having from the friends because it doesn't want to seem pathetic or less than in front of them and those are issues that can happen in friendship and i really love how the friendship is also a huge point of the series. Yes, we see what's going on with the careers, with their love lives, but the friendship is explored. And that's something I really like because, um, yes, I love a good love story like everybody else. I love a success story like everybody else. But friendship also needs to be depicted on TV and see all the different shapes and form that it can take and all the little different issues that can arouse between within a friendship group. And all of that is really explored and the growth within their bound and just how everything unfolds when it comes to issues and when they come back together. I felt like it was really nicely written. It never felt rushed, you know. It was like a real journey that they took. When we start the series, they assume that everything is fine because they meet each other, they have fun, they always love they always laugh and you know just be there for each other but there are issues that are never touch on and it's like always ignoring that one um thing that may be an issue later on because you want to maintain this facade of everything is going well within the friendship groups and for it went from there from this I would say superficial happiness that they had to them having issues, discovering everything that was wrong within the group and maybe things that needed to be fixed to them achieving actual understanding and having actual peace and now the happiness and everything it's something that is real it's coming from a place of experience and understanding so I really really love that about the series it was such an amazing time now number nine was a maid's revenge now this i watched because of tiktok so the lead actor is always featured on Yuku's TikToks, always, because he's a very attractive man, and they always post those thirst traps, <laughs> and, you know, that's how I found out through the comments that, oh, he was starring in a series called Maid's Revenge, and then I went to watch it, and wow, it was really good. So, I felt like this was such a, a nice series. Um, I love the theme that it explored. I wish the episodes were longer because 15 or so minutes were not enough for that goodness. So this story is about um, Ting Yao. 
her entire family is wiped out in a massacre one random night and she has to seek refuge with her fiance's family unfortunately the head of that family is the person that she assumes is responsible for the massacre and that is her our main lead because when everything occurred with her family he arrived there so when the series the series start the way he arrives at their house it can be very very suspicious because how did you know all of this was happening and you know she's in shock so she does not necessarily process everything with the best rational mind so for her he was there he is responsible i hate you um i want revenge unfortunately once she gets to the family house she finds that her half sister has assumed her identity and now she has to pass as a maid because she wants to get into the house and take revenge on the person she assumes is responsible for a family massacre but you know it's a drama so things just go from there and develop into romance and she discovers so many different things and what i really enjoy about this show first of all is the chemistry between the lead this couple i wish they have another series that is like longer the episodes are a bit longer than what we got because the chemistry with the, with them was insane every time they were on screen together you will feel something and the male lead oh my god <laughs> if confidence was a person he will embody that confidence the way he walks the way he talks the way he interacts with his family member with her it's so manly so cool and is such aside from the obvious which is how beautiful he is um he is also an amazing actor and when it comes to her i love how she portrayed the different emotions that she was going through and at first i was really frustrated with her because from the very beginning i could tell that the fiance was just a douchebag in disguise and every time she would just you know hate on the male lead and praise the fiance i was like i will cringe inside i'm like how can you not see that this is a bad person please get yourself together but i just love how through different you know obstacles and issues that you faced they started getting closer and closer together and their relationship is just so beautiful i also love um how strong she was represented because sometimes i feel like in c drama they love to infantilize the lead you know they will give them really whiny voices they will depict them as those um useless almost characters where she always needs to be saved there's always somebody that needs to intervene she doesn't know how to do anything the only thing that she knows how to do is annoy you with her voice and i love the fact that i feel like for the past 2 3 years they have started moving away from the depiction of female lead and making them into the strong woman that they are in reality and i really love how strong she is yes she gets help from the male, male lead but she has her own personality her own will and she's always doing her own thing you know sometimes it can lead to issues but i love that she has personality and i definitely recommend this a drama for sure Now number 8 is Romance of the Little Forest. Now this was another drama that I saw randomly. Um I like to do that once I when I have nothing to watch and I just go and look recently released drama and give them a try, which is what happened with the show. Now 
the show is both in my top 10 list and in my most disappointing on the year but i will elaborate more on that once i get to that video today i want to focus on everything that i love about the show so it's about Yumeren, who is a fashion blogger, and she wants to use her beauty to get revenge against a man that um, rejected her when they were in, u in university. So what she does is pretend that she is this shallow person that only relies on her beauty, and she will try and seduce him and then reject him like she was rejected later. But then things obviously don't work out the way she expects because, you know, in life there's always layers <laughs> and there's more layers to him than what she expects. And she kind of get trapped into her own game because... Well, it's not really get trapped into her own game because from the very beginning of the series, you can tell she already has feelings for him that never really went away. And what the rejection did is instead of deter her and make her just want to move on with her life, she stayed in that state of mind, focused on him. She can say everything that she wants like she likes to lie to her best friend that at the beginning of the series that she has no feelings left or anything but she's still very much affected by him and the more she goes on with this game and try to get revenge she just falls more and more for him then we have our male lead which when it started i or immediately just took to him. I love how his personality is and how he is like your typical, you know, cold man, male lead. But then as the series progresses, they, you realize that there's just more to him and is not really necessarily cold. It's much more of an awkward personality and the brightness of Miren actually works into bringing him, bringing him out of his shell and I love the person he becomes when he is around her and I enjoy their relationship. I had issues with some of the stuff that happened just for the sake of plot pushing but for the most part I really loved their relationship. Um, You know what's your typical fake to real relationship but i felt like that situation allowed them to understand each other my only issue was her still lying you know because she's smart she actually is a doctor but she doesn't want to say it at at first i understood kind of even though the motive behind all of this um, it's not something that I can get behind because it makes no sense. He rejected you. Okay, move on. You don't need to make this whole grand scheme so that you can just get him back. Like, it's just, it, there's no point for me, honestly, in her motivation. But then the more you watch the series, you understand that she kind of, she's stuck in this space where she really never consider anybody else aside from him it's like that one rejection defined her understanding of relationship and everything surrounding that and it's like she has this one fixation on him external vision everything is all about him and it can be a good and a bad thing because now she is well, she's not really forced, but let's say she decides to lie and, and be omit part of her personality just because she wants to get revenge for something that he clearly doesn't even remember, which is the insane part about all of it because, yes, he remembers her in some capacity, but not that huge significant event that is the catalyst for everything that happens in the series it's insane to me how 
two people can view a situation completely different and attach different levels of importance to something. And for her, it was such a monumental thing that that's all she wants, get revenge, get revenge, get revenge. And for him, it clearly moved on with his life. It was just like a manual thing, you know, somebody wanted to be with me, I was not interested, and that's life. <laughs> You know, it's such an in interesting dynamic. I really love her fam family. Uh, I love her relationship with her parents. I love how they embrace him. And just how the family bond is explored within the series. I hated that uh, lady, <laughs> her enemy, it's just one of those people that decide to have issues with someone that is doing better than them in life and assume that everything that is going wrong is because of that one person that clearly doesn't even take you into consideration at all. But somehow they have this huge power over you, whereas nothing works in your life because of them. It just makes no sense, you know, so I hated that lady, but um, the show is really good and I enjoy that a lot. Now, number seven on the list is The Blue Whisper. Now, this is another really, really good one. I loved that show. A lot. Um, I put them. I put it at number seven. It's a combination of part one and two because I waited so long for the show. It's one of my most anticipated of 2022. So I was suffering when the first part was airing, and then it took so long to get subtitles, and I had to wait for the second part to come out, and then wait for the subtitles. So I was suffering the entire time. And my expectations were just growing and growing because this had to be one of the best drama of the year. So it's the story of Yune, who is a powerful and talented spiritual master. She meets Cheng Yi, a mermaid who appears in the valley because he's being captured by um, Shunde, the cruel, the cruel princess. And Yune is tasked with kind of, how can I put this nicely? Tame him. First of all, that was my first issue <laughs> with this whole situation. But I will get more into that later. So she starts with taming him, making him talk, making him give up his tail. Just so that the princess can have more power because in that world, um, spiritual masters kind of enslaves, not kind of, that's what they do. They enslave, um, you know, mythical creatures for different reason. They help them with like combat training, all those other stuff and most of the time, it's even without their consent, just because, you know, strength, strong people always want to maintain the strength, even if others are going to suffer as a result. But Yuna is not your typical spiritual master. She has her own issues. She's been abused by the chief of um, the sect for a long time, who is always experimenting on her. So she's also going through something. She's looking for freedom. She wants to run away from the sect. But then, you know, she meets Cheng Yi and so many things up happen after that. Now, this series was really good because I loved the relationship between the two of them. At times, it was really frustrating, especially later on in the series when things start to go left. I felt like both of them, but mainly her, took decisions that made no sense to me. Like one episode, there will be like, we are going to go through this 
together whatever issue that we are going to face we are going to make it out together the next episode one of them will do something that is clearly going to hurt the other under you know the typical i'm hurting you for for your own good thing ah when can this trope go away I cannot do it with that anymore. Like, I hate it, especially when we're having a great time, we understand each other. I know she lied to him. That was always going to be an issue. But then I, f- I felt like it would have been more understanding of her because clearly he had an idea of what was going on. And if she came out and said, listen, at first, I was lying to you because I was like to do so and so and so and so, but things have changed. You would have understood instead of everything that occurred later. But, you know, we need conflict for the story to move on. I love this because it just made me feel so many different things. I was annoyed. I was happy. I was in my feels. Uh, I hated to see Shani suffer. I loved him so much. He's definitely my favorite character out of the entire series. And oh my god, he was just the sweet person that was forced to change because of circumstances. And even when he was this kind of, how can I put this? bad person because of the bitterness that the betrayal caused him he was still like the sweet mermaid that you met at the beginning so i really really enjoy the show i loved um just the relationship the story was really good there were iffy moments here and there but for the most part i really like um the series i don't necessarily agree with how the ending went and at at some point it felt a bit lackluster it's like big fights that you were waiting to happen were resolved in such a nonchalant way that it will become very frustrating. But for the most part, this drama was really good. The acting, perfect. Now, number six was Love Like the Galaxy. Now, this is another really, really good one. I loved the show. It was really good. This I loved mainly for the relationship between the leads. I loved how it came about, how it grew, how it was depicted, how the sacrifices went both ways. You know, most of the time in series, it will be that one person that always sacrifices all the time they're always compromising thinking about the other oh i'm doing this for you i'm doing this for you but i feel like in the show both were making sacrifices i also really like um how she was depicted i love a character like i said there it's been this change it's slow but it's becoming more and more apparent where we are getting more and more strong female lead who have their own voice their own aspiration they look for their own way of happiness so this is a story of Lingui, who is the foster son of the emperor. And when he was on a personal mission, he met uh, Shaoshang, who is determined to live life for herself. She has been kind of um, left by her parents because they went to war. Both of her parents are in the military. and. Because of that, she has a strained relationship with her her parents, her family, and she just wants to be free, you know? She wants to live for herself. She's very unruly, um, and her personality doesn't fit with life at court or, you know, everything that is a bit more disciplined. She is clearly a free spirit and 
will not fit whatsoever in the mold that in that time they expected women to be. And their relationship is amazing. It's one of the best relationship that was shown on TV this year. I love how they understood each other, what they wanted. I love the fact that it just let her be great. You know, um, I feel like so many times we get those male leads that are always suffocating the female lead. You know, it's all about his dream, all about him, all about how she loves him. Even if the series start with the female lead being all strong, but as soon as they fall in love, it's like she becomes this new person without dreams and aspirations but that does not happen here actually their relationship made her stronger and it's because both of them allowed the other to be who they were and that's something that i really loved about the show is how they showcased how much strength you can get from a relationship with somebody that really understands you. You know, they were in love, but their love did not become the, the sacrifice point for everything that they want in life. In fact, it was their biggest motivator. He always wanted her to have everything that she wants. And she always stood behind him and helped him in her own way to achieve his goals as well. It was just such a beautifully written relationship. And that becomes the center around everything else in the series. Because the relationship is so well written, even the challenges that they faced are so entertaining and so beautiful to see the way they are resolved. Like nothing felt rushed. Um sometimes I feel like some shows are way too long. I feel like I felt like this was the perfect length because every single challenge was explored, resolved in a way that always felt you know, reasonable. Nothing felt rushed and there was no point in time where the story started to drag. No, it was entertaining all the way through. Now, number five was The Out of Love. This was another drama that I really anticipated as soon as i knew it was coming out i was already waiting for him for <laughs> for him well kind of because you know shazan and i love him a lot so i wanted to see what the spare was going to be like what the chemistry was going to be like and i was not disappointed so this is the story of Zisha. She is a budding cellist and a world kind of come crashing down once her dad is diagnosed with cancer. And Guwe, the male lead, is a doctor in charge of a father case. But before they meet <laughs> in the hospital, they have an awkward meeting, you know, at a club you know, your typical misunderstanding, and then they meet again at the hospital with a dad, and things don't necessarily go well at first. You know, they butt head quite a lot, but then they start to understand each other, and, you know, first form a friendship through the hardship, and then loves bloom, and you know the rest challenges different things that happen and once again this was such a beautiful depiction of love a love that lets you be who you are explore yourself let you um develop your own personality you don't disappear in the relationship but it actually brings the person that you are to the forefront which is something that i love but I feel like one thing about the show is you got the typical C-drama female lead because at times she was exhausting. She will just do things 
that will just annoy the life out of me. But, <laughs> you know, she grew. That's something I love. I give credit to the show as she grew. When we start the show, she's very immature. You can tell that even though she kind of knows what, what she wants, she still doesn't really know what she wants, where she wants to go. She has an idea of where she wants to go, but like she's not really sure. And it's only when the misfortune happens that she starts growing. She comes into her own. She starts making her own decision. And it's the story of independence. Both of them, actually, because she had parents that were very supportive and very behind her, gave her freedom. The issue was with her. She was not really like sure where she was going and she needed to grow and become her own person, learn to make decisions, not because people wanted to decide for her, but because she was always relying on her parents for everything. With him, it was different. From the mom from the very moment the series start, he has a clear idea of what he wants, where he's going, but then his parents are very overbearing. So where she gets freedom for her parents, he is very suffocated in his family situation. And once they meet and start this friendship, this relationship, they just find freedom from the family, from you know, the different little issues that they both were having and i love their relationship it's so well written i love the pace at which it goes i love the way it is depicted how they fall in love and even how they will resolve the different issues that they are going to have throughout the show it's just so good i really really enjoy that aspect of it Number four is love between a fairy and a devil. So 30,000 years after the first God of War sacrifice, there was a disturbance in the metro. While attempting to help the new God of War, Orchid find herself face to face with the Moon Supreme. Their encounter sets off a chain of events that threatens to change the fate of the world once again i love this show so good first thing first i love the chemistry between the lead i love their love story i love that for once the mr greedy two shoes is the female the, the female the second lead instead of the first i love how complex the moon supreme is because they call him devil but the more you get to know his backstory where he's coming from you realize that nothing is really what it seems like and who we consider the good guys may not in fact be the good guys and orchid is in right in between everything she's at the center of everything you know when we start the series, she is in love with the God of War. I cannot stand <laughs> that character. I have an issue with like two perfect writers, um, characters in series. Mr. I can do no wrong. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, go away. And I loved the fact that he was the second lead and not the first. So Orchid start off like really in love with him and out of good intentions she put herself in a very bad situation well it worked out in the end because it helped her meet devil but she puts herself in a very bad situation and they start this journey of i don't understand you i hate you you the bad guy but then maybe there's more to you and the more they get to know each other she realizes that it may not be as bad as everybody else makes him to be i love how at 
first, even when he helps her, it's not of his own will. It's like, ugh, I have to help her because <laughs> I'm compelled to. And then it goes into, I help you because I'm concerned. Then I help you because I love you. I love the progression of their relationship. And you get to see that evolution through both or the of the eyes so you get to see how things grow from orchid you know perspective and how she start changing in her how can i put it impression of him how she considers him how things start changing the moment she starts getting feelings she just you know, is a very honest character, which is something that I really love. And the way that it is portrayed, it's so beautiful. The acting is insane in the show because we get a character that start off really naive, you know, and very impressionable. But as life deals her with so many different challenges, she starts to harden and her personality starts to shape into something a bit more different and the mannerism starts changing. That's what I really love about the show. The acting is down to the little detail. It will be in the way they will look at each other initially when it's more of an annoyance instead of actual feelings. He will look at her a certain way and as the time progresses, his gaze becomes more and more soft and more and more um on I am having feelings for you. And he portrays the love with not only whatever he's saying, but the way he carries himself, the way he interacts with her. The acting is amazing in this show. It's so good. Uh, even when they are not talking, they are just giving off amazing vibes. It's, an, um, it's a great story. It's something that will have you on the edge of your seat and you will be stuck just you want to finish this is something that you binge it's so good number three on the list is who rules the world this was a year of strong female lead in c drama i loved the show so much so this is the story of um, Hei Fenchi and Bai Fenchi. So Hei Fenchi is a handsome and elegant um, martial artist, while Bai Fenchi is majestic and unrestrained. And they are very different from each other. And they are considered the two strongest people in the martial world. And as time went on, they become caught up in warfare and chaos in the martial and political world. And they also in the midst of falling in love. It's an, it's a very interesting story because when we start the series, both of them are up here. They are the strongest in the land. And in some way, because of that, they are the only ones that truly understand each other. And they have different identities. So they have the the martial art world identities and they have others' identity as well. And when you start the series, you don't realize just how many layers there is to the relationship between the both of them because their life their life are intertwined in so many different ways. And as the story progresses, the show of feelings and how they are able, they are always ready to make sacrifices for each other. Well, once the show starts, it's clear that at least one of them is already in love with the other even though the other one may not be fully aware of what is going on and it's so beautiful to see them fall in love with each other go through all those different challenges and 
reach that point where because I'm the only one that understands you in this world, I am able to see things in your way and try to help you solve this particular problem the best way I know how. And it's such a nice how can I put this? <laughs> I loved just how their relationship is written. I think it's one of the biggest attractor for me when it comes to a series is the relationship between them, how they go from kind of misunderstanding each other, mainly her, because I feel like, like I mentioned from the very beginning, you get a sense that he already has feeling for her and he actually just fights her because he likes to be around her and you know maybe that's the only way he can be in our company without outright coming out and saying that he has feelings for her and then as time goes on you see her falling in love and also now start to understand him better because she has so many assumptions about him and his character once the story begin and she's always ready to think the worst of him but the more the series goes on and she starts to understand his motivation how it works his personality she starts to reach this point where she knows that sometimes what it's what what he does is not really a reflection of what he really feels inside and Oh, this character. I love Haifen Shi because he is so strong, but at the same time, he is like your typical misunderstood hero. Everything that he does is always taken <laughs> out of context. Nobody really understands his motivations most of the time, but you realize that everything every action every word is done for a purpose and is actually the the most selfless person in this entire show i love this so much um the conflict just serve as a background to the relationship and also drives the story forward but for me the highlight of the show is definitely the relationship between the two now, number two is Legally Romance. This was such a great show because it explored tropes and stories that we've seen done before and just done in a different ways. So this is your typical going back in the past, trying to change things, kind of story but at the same time it's different so many different things that i love about this so this is a story of lu shun and chan wei um they have known each other since university they've been at odd since university and one of them is slightly more successful than the other and Chan Wei is actually the one that is kind of lacking a little bit. And she feels like she's always coming second to Lucian ever since they were in university. Even now that they are adult, she is his secretary. And, you know, everything that she tries to achieve, it's like it's always besting her. And when the series begin, Lucian feels like very over overbearing, um, is kind of just always on a case, always making her suffer. But you get little glimpse of maybe it just has her best interests at heart and it just doesn't know how to express that properly. And then she suffers an accident and goes back in the past. And there she gets the opportunity to relieve her university days. And she sits on the spot of, I'm going to best him. This time around, I'm going to be the best one. Everything that he has, I want. Which, from the get-go, I was not on board with. Because 
Why is that your motivation? Why could it be, let me make my life better point? Why do you need to take something from someone else? Especially because as the story progresses, you realize that he didn't cheat for all those things that he did. It won them by his own effort so why do you want to snatch all those things for him everything that you are going to win is with that advantage of you already have lived through all those different things and not necessarily your capabilities so i was not happy with this being her motivation at all but you know thank god it was a dream and things it went back to normal but what she realizes real oh my god <laughs> what she realizes when she goes back in the past and she relives all those things that happened when they were in university she realized that actually throughout her life Lucian actually has actually been the one that has been there for her every time and I love how he's always been that silent support for her. And the more you get to know their background story, how they got to get where they are today, you realize that from the very moment that they started, you know, being a part of each other life, he has been this constant support and doing things behind the scene without seeking seeking validation or any type of reward, but always being behind her and trying to solve issues. And of course, you know, it's a romantic story as well. So he also has feelings for her from the very beginning it's just she never saw all of his efforts and i love this story because it's just show so many different things first it's very easy to um overlook something that you take for granted because that's what happened he was always there, always doing things. And, you know, she never stopped for a minute and think, why is he doing all of this for me? Or really appreciate everything that he did for her. Also, you know, I feel like Lucian, they could have been a couple for a very, very long time. But it's your typical, I'm not going to say anything and just do things that <laughs> are not really a reflection of my feelings because of X, Y, and Z. Their relationship, especially when they were in the past, was really, really good. And then she comes back, it gets better, and now she knows that he always had feelings for her. She was the one in the wrong all those times. She assumed that he had feelings for another one of their friends. And trying to make this man confess was hurting me as well as her. Because it was like, I was like, why can't you just come out and say, yeah, I have feelings for you. Why do we need to suffer episode after episode of her coming close to discovering what is in this damn bottle and you acting like the world is going to stop if you just admit that you have feelings. It was painful watching her trying to get this man to admit to his feelings. But finally, we got there in the end and everything ended up better. <laughs> but it's a very beautiful story. Um, it's so good. I loved everything there. Um, the comedy is golden. The acting, the chemistry between the leads, the story is really nice. I love the writing as well. And it was just like, you know, a very, very good story. Now, the best series of the year is definitely Dying with Love. That story is so good this is the best show of 2022 it was just so interesting so this is a story of you are home it is a food flap 
platform owner who doesn't know how to cook. It doesn't want to waste time learning and uses a standing every time he has a fi- he has to film for his reality show. So something happens where people start to question whether it actually knows how to cook. So to solve the situation, they employ Kellen as the PR director and she actually becomes his culinary teacher. And now the relationship starts from there and so many different things happen. First of all, (laughs) this man is insane. For all of those years, he's always used that stand-in to cook. It's like, it's a simple thing that he could do. Just go and learn how to cook, sir. Why do you need to go through that can you imagine all of the money that he spent paying that standing while he could have used that to have like simple lessons or even find a new host for the show but um i really what i enjoy with this one once again is the relationship this year the way the relationships in those shows were depicted was really really nice this is another amazing relationship which is explored really nicely you know it's go it goes from them kind of being strangers to each other we are just coming together for this common goal which is i'm going to teach you how to cook and you know this is going to be a way for me to um make a living and then they start to develop a friendship and understanding and more and more and more. The chemistry between the leads is so good. <laughs> it is so good. I love when they interact with each other. The acting was really nice. I love how even when they were not yet in a relationship and it was still your typical cold lead, he never took things too far, in my opinion. You know, there were some things that he did that were a little bit like on the line, but I felt like I felt like it never took things too far because sometimes this whole coldness is just the disguise for bullying, and the male lead will just bully the female lead, and then somehow we are supposed to accept that she fell in love with this bully. No, 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 no. I loved how even though he was cold and everything it was much more of somebody that is misunderstood and he was not giving himself chances to really get close to anyone because everything was a waste of his time you know as the type of person that wants everything done on his own time so if it says two minutes you have to solve this problem you have two minutes to solve the problem by minute three is gone and with this type of people it's very difficult to kind of get to know them and develop any type of relationship with them be it friendship or love but i love how throughout the series there is so much growth and transformation when it comes to his character her character as well she also grows through her own journey and to see them growing as people and their relationship growing as well was really nice and this is definitely the best c drama of the year so let me know in the comments what your top 10 5 or 15 looks like when it comes to see drama this year and also do we have any favorite um in common and what is your most anticipated drama of 2023 that's it for me today i'll see you really really soon